Please join me in prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. After escaping slavery in Egypt, Moses and the Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. They were trying to find their way home, but it was slow going. There were a lot of obstacles, a lot of mistakes, many missteps and false leads. And one of those was the snakes. Deserts have snakes, and that was as true in ancient times as it is in ours. The Israelites took a wrong turn, spiritually as well as spatially, and encountered a den of snakes, deadly and aggressive. Many of the Israelites were bitten, and the poison from the bite coursed through their bodies, shutting down their organs and rapidly causing death. And so the story goes, Moses reached out to God and asked for help. And God commanded Moses to take one of the snakes and to nail it up upon a stick. And the Israelites were instructed to look at that snake if they wanted to be healed. There in the desert, the only thing that could save them, the only way for them to stay alive was by looking hard at the thing that had bitten them, the thing that was killing them. The only way for them to keep traveling on their way home was to stare at that snake and by doing so, neutralize its poison in their veins. We are also trying to get ourselves home. That's what we're doing coming to church this Sunday, and it's what we're doing when we can remember it Saturday and Monday and Tuesday and all the other days of the week. And as we bob and weave and trek and dance through our wilderness walk, we too make many mistakes and missteps. We too follow a lot of false leads. We too mess up. We say things that we should not have said, or we don't say things that we should have. We do things that we should not have done, or we don't do things that it would have been better to do. We do these things mostly without meaning to, and Sometimes we even do them on purpose. And over time, these things, they build up inside us. They build up inside us, just like venom. And once we've messed up, once we've realized that we went down the wrong path, once we've unleashed poisonous words or thoughtless actions, Often the last thing that we want to do is look at them or think about them. Oh no, no thank you. We, we would like to move on. The trouble is that they find us. They find us in the middle of the night while we lie awake or when we drink too much, or work too much, or scroll too much, to avoid thinking too much about things that we are not proud of. They find us in our defensiveness, in our self-righteous delight at other people's sins. They find us in our reactivity, 
in our constant need to be right. When we refuse to look at our own mistakes, at our own snakes, the venom keeps working. And that poison shuts us down. It keeps us from fully living the abundant and joyful and authentic life that Christ offers us, that Christ came to give us. It distracts and distorts and bends us away from our most grounded, best selves. And so we are invited to do something about it. We are invited to go find the venom inside us, the anger and the resentment and the poor choices and bad actions and poisonous words, and bring them into the light of day. Examine them and see what is taking life from us. Now, not all anger is poisonous. And no one else gets to decide for you what constitutes a bad decision. But usually, you know what they are when you take a second to look at them. And so when we find those things, we lift them up. We lift them up and we name them. And we take their power away. We release the venom and we give it to God, who is also lifted up upon a tree and who has seen us at our very worst and loves us completely anyway. We do this every week here together, just to practice, when we say our weekly confession. And then we say together our assurance of pardon. And we do this so that we can go out into the world and we can be the kind of people who are not shocked or awed or crushed when we get it wrong, but can look our own failures and missteps right in the face and say sorry, can look a misdirection right in the face and decide to backtrack. People who know that they do mess up and who can face that and who still know that despite that, they are loved and forgiven. We do this so that we can be the kind of people who when other people mess up or lash out or spew poison onto us, we are able to say, me too, me too, I have poison too. And also, you owe me an apology. And I might owe you one too. Let's take these snakes out and look at them together. This scripture, the scripture we heard read this morning by Marilee, it's John 3:16 and selected verses. And it is one that people like to paint on their faces at football games and put on the tags of random household objects. It is one of the most well-known scripture passages in our Bible. But I'm not sure how many of the people who are quoting it bother to look up this story in Numbers 21 about Moses and the snakes, the story upon which Jesus was preaching. So even though this scripture verse is often taken out of context, Nonetheless, its message is a good one. It's a great one. It is that God can take all our dysfunction, all our poison and anger and straight up meanness and 
work with it and create beauty. Anyway, and we are invited to take all that stuff out of the darkness and bring it into the light, the light of forgiveness and the light of visibility. We are invited to drag our shortcomings and our shame, all of the things that bring us down or keep us up in the middle of the night, and we are invited to raise those things up to God and up to ourselves. And we do this because our faith teaches us that this is how we get home again, back to God and back to ourselves. And we do this too because we know that we have no need to fear, for we are pardoned and loved and worthy. And there is nothing in all of creation that can separate us from God's eternal and abundant love. Not our sins, not our doubts, not even poisonous snakes. Praise be to God, and amen.